<laughs> explaining to us in an understandable way what are natural rights yeah. and how we deal with this tension. How has this become yeah. controversial? Yeah. I'm so glad you guys take on this topic because it goes to the heart of the American creed, the idea of natural rights and natural law. Let me just quote Jefferson, if I could, where he said, notes uh, on the state of Virginia, he said, uh, can the liberties of a nation be thought secure if we have removed their only firm basis, a conviction in the minds of the people that these liberties come from God? So here's Jefferson, probably the most religiously unorthodox of the founders next to Franklin, mm. who says you can't disconnect the idea of natural rights, natural law, from the idea of biblical religion, God himself. That's Jefferson. So this goes to the heart of the American creed. It was universally shared among the founders. It really hasn't been a controversial idea up until recently. Well, it's still hard for some people to understand, so let's just play off what, what Melissa Harris Perry yeah. had to say there. And we've got some tweets from people out there that responded to Paul Ryan's speech with, with, with consternation, with, uh, with uh, jaw dropping. Apoplexy. With <laughs> apoplexy. So let's show you what some of the questions they had were. This is a tweet from Derek D. Barry. Yeah. Ryan wants God and nature to govern us. When did that last work? In 1980? Or maybe in 1880? Maybe it's 1780, when, when it was perfect. Hashtag wrong. Or you have this one from Mike Wilson. If our rights are from God in nature, who protects the weak, poor, and underprivileged? Social Darwinism lives. Your name is Romney and Ryan. If natural rights <laughs> exist, that, but there is a point behind some of this. Yeah. If natural rights exist, how do you explain them not being afforded to people in our own country's history? For example, yeah. African Americans. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways to answer that. It seems to me, though, there's a great historical amnesia at work, and it's, it's too gentle to say historical amnesia. It's really historical lobotomy, mm -hmm. if you think about it, because what were the founders doing with this whole natural rights, natural law thing? They didn't want a theocracy. And the whole idea of natural rights is there are certain common moral ideas we can all agree on, we come together on, there's a moral consensus, there, there's a moral intuition we all agree on, and so we don't have to rely on revelation to govern us. We can appeal instead to this common moral consensus, which is grounded ultimately in the great gift that the Jews gave to the West, which is the Ten Commandments. You speak of the amnesia. I think a lot of liberals, and actually this commentator, she says that it wasn't until the Civil War. Well, it's interesting because Lincoln himself, continuously cited the Declaration of Independence as the font for all of his political That's beliefs. Right. He said That's he never right. had a, a, a political thought that did not emanate from the Declaration, right. actually. So he cited yes. the Declaration in his justification for his entire belief system yes. and going forward. And also beyond that, he said that it's set in place, and this is, I think, what's so special, and as Paul Ryan talks about the American idea, it's set in place that freedom for all peoples, beyond even in this country, he yes. said this in 1861, that the Declaration made the argument for all people to have liberty, yes. not just Americans. So yes. th this amnesia, I think, where, where does it come from? <laughs> why, why is there a negation of this history that everybody should embrace as part of our founding? I mean, you can see, you can see Jefferson's uh, uh, thoughts on this right there in, in his monument there in, in Washington, D.C. The, the words are literally in the, uh, the Jefferson monument. Where does it come from? I mean, look, the idea of natural law means that there's a transcendent moral authority that exists outside of you to which you're accountable, which will ultimately judge your actions and maybe restrain or constrain your decision making. In other words, radical individualism has a hard mm. time with natural rights and natural law, right? You know, I think this is probably going to be one of many controversies that we end up talking about where religion is concerned because the press doesn't have to go very far to find a controversy. If you remember back in 2008 when Sarah Palin said that she prayed on big decisions. This was a controversy, even though that is probably a practice shared by 90% of the country. But I think, you know, and we've had conversations about faith and belief. Coming from my position as an atheist, I try to reach the same conclusion that you would without relying on faith and, and God. And so the way I come to natural rights is by way of sovereignty and property and ownership. If you think about your own sovereignty as a person, I don't think anyone, believer or non-believer, would say that they are the property of the state. You yes. would say you are the property of yourself. Well, that is natural rights. I mean, that is the idea that you have sovereignty and ownership yes. over yourself, yes. your life, your pursuit you of happiness. You nailed it. Yes. it because it's not just you have sovereignty over yourself <laughs> as opposed to the state, but you have sovereignty over yourself as opposed to your fellow individuals. I disagree with you, Jeff. Right. I think radical individualism and the concept of natural rights go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is dependent upon a theological view of the world. I think the concept that we are individuals and that we are free of one another and cannot impose upon one another yeah. It's right there, hand in hand. Coolidge's with the description of, of democracy yeah. is it doesn't deny the divine right of kings, it asserts the divine right of all men. But what I think that what we sort of are missing here is we talk about controversy. 
Where did this controversy come from? When did we start deciding that this was a controversial idea? Historically, politically, you know, what, what was the real sort of, uh, you know, hitch point for this? Because you talked about Lincoln, but JFK in his, in his inaugural said the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from God. At what point did this become right. controversial? Can, yeah. I, can I suggest something? In, yeah. in looking at Melissa George's statement here, um, well, I sit in the body of an African-American woman, <laughs> <laughs> like the professor, yeah. and she says that we do have these, you know, uh, in, in, inalienable rights, yes. but it seems to me that what she's suggesting is that Paul Ryan doesn't have a right himself to talk about it. What I see here is a lot of racial resentment, hmm. that if Paul Ryan's going to express the right, you know, the Declaration of Independence and these inalienable rights, yeah. that it's supposed to be followed up with an apology. But we weren't good at, you know, yeah. at yes. extending them to all American yes. citizens, that yes. as a white man, he bears this guilt and this burden yes. every time he mentions it. I actually yes. think she's yes. admitting that she agrees that there are natural rights. Yes. But that but her, her defense male, is, no, she, what she's it. saying is, you need the government to enforce them The state them has sometimes. to give you those natural rights. Which I mean, she, she's, she's not wrong that in our history, we've had to but, come around to is, the government enforcing those to all why people. Why is she taking this such is, but she is, for Ryan, but Paul Ryan to mentioning it? This, no, I, I get your point about racial undertones, for sure. But I think at least she's admitting in this that there is such a thing as natural rights. That's the liberal argument. That they exist, but without government, they only exist in theory. That's why, that's why they think, only right. exist in theory. You must have the government to right. protect them. There's, there's a lack of, yeah. of comfort, I think, with, with what's uh, asserted in, in the Declaration of Independence by liberals, and there's also the sense, because it really is also a refutation <laughs> of statism, because they, yes. want, they want the state to be all-encompassing, they want yes. it to give you everything is that you need, yes. right. and what the Declaration asserts, very, it, it's not yes. only a refutation of that um, ideology, it's also a refutation of bureaucracy, of, you know, this is what you're doing to us, this is not right, yes. this is not allowing us to actually have the freedoms that we're supposed to have before yes. the fact. So there's sort of a chicken and egg issue here, right? I mean, it's, yes. th they want to believe it, but it's... Yes, and on this point, I mean, it, it's incredibly useful if government, if our public culture says we, we believe in the idea of natural rights and natural law, because that suggests then government itself is accountable. It's counter, accountable to that higher moral right. transcendent norm, whether you give it a purely materialistic uh, you know, naturalistic origin or spiritual Christian origin, whatever it is, if you can agree that there's something transcendent outside of the individual, you're more likely to protect those natural rights. You know, I, I, 